Hi, I'm introducing Marissa Rivera, who is the aunt of Anissa Rivera, who recently passed away from teen violence. She's going to explain a little bit about what occurred in her relationship and how parents can see the see how they can protect their kids. Okay. Um, Anissa got into the relationship with her boyfriend. Kenneth Barr, uh, December of 2006. Um, at that time, we started seeing, weeks later, all the changes in her. She started distancing herself from her friend, her friends and her family. Um, she just, her whole mood swings had changed. Never home, constantly on the phone with him. If she wasn't with him, she was on the phone with him. Uh, he controlled her every move. Uh, a couple of months later, she started not going to school anymore. She dropped out of school. And then she started becoming very disobedient. She stopped basically coming home when she was supposed to. She wouldn't come home until like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, sometimes we couldn't even find her. At times, she would disappear for weeks, months at a time. And she was with him. We had no idea where he lived at because she knew he wasn't welcomed okay. around the family at all because we kept on telling her not to be with him. Okay. So much as we told her not to be with him, she was with him even more. Okay. So there was a lot of changes in her. We saw the warning signs. A um, year and a half into the relationship, uh, when, she became, when she started living with me, I had gained full custody of her. And I put her back into school. Sorry. I got her into counseling. And she started hanging out with her friends. She started becoming a teenager again. She started That's putting great. a smile on her face. That's great. She had life. And slowly, he just was sucking all that out of her again. I had to change my house phone number. I changed my cell phone number, um, her cell phone number, rather. And I asked his mother to keep him away from her because they were no good. Was he also a teenager? Yes, he was, uh, well at the time this happened last year, he was 18, I believe. Okay. So, um, when I asked her to keep him away from her, that he was obsessive. Um, she just said, they're teenagers, they're in love. I told her it wasn't love, it was obsessive, it was controlling, it was psychotic. She just completely bypassed that. Okay. Um, even though as much as she tried to get away from him, she was still, he still had that hold, hold on, on her. her. And every time she would break up with him or not answer the phone, he would cry and cry and beg her to answer the phone. And if she broke up with him, he would say he would kill himself. So she, in, in order for her not to have that on her conscience, she would, she go, would back. go back to him. She would speak to him, take his phone calls. So I had her in counseling and they were actually trying to help her along with that and um, I still didn't help because she was craving attention even though it was negative attention. It was some type of attention. Exactly and as much as I would tell her it's not healthy, he doesn't love you. It's obsessive. It's infatuation. You know, I still would tell her I love you. Your cousins love you. Your aunts. Your grandfather. She would always tell me it's not the same. So she was searching for something okay. that for some reason he had a hold on her. Mm -hmm. And she would always say, I know if no one wants to speak to me, he'll always want to talk to me. Okay. So it was just he that filled attention. that void exactly. that she felt that she had. Yeah, that she needed, which she did not need from him. Mm -hmm. So um, even though she was hanging out with her friends, like I said, he still had a hold on her. Uh, she had a counseling session on October 2nd. And um, she had a counseling session for an hour. She was scheduled to take her GED in the middle of October. Um, the program she was in, that I put her into a GED program, because she was so far behind in going to her, back to her regular high school, we just stuck her in a GED program. She went to school Monday through Thursday. Okay. So on October 2nd, she had a counseling session. And within that hour counseling session, um, her boyfriend must have called her about five or six times. She said that she wasn't going to um, take the phone calls, but as soon as the counselor left, 
she went outside, was hanging out with her friends in front of the steps, and he continually called. So she started telling him, I have a new boyfriend, leave me alone, I don't want to be with you. He said, the only way I'll leave you alone is if you're pregnant with another boy's kid. And she says, fine, then, um, you know, I'm two months pregnant. And she had a phone, a speakerphone, and he says, I'm coming to kill you, and I'm going to kill him. And all her friends heard that and bypassed it. And all joked around. She says, oh, he says it all the time. He's not doing anything. Well, did he ever hit, hit her yes. before then? Yes. Um, after everything happened, I found out that she's called her friends several times to say that he's just hit her, he's beat her, and she would be crying. Um, one time I seen a journal in my living room. I wasn't going to open it, but being that, I said the only way I'm going to find out the truth about this relationship is by reading her journal. You were protecting her. Yes, because back in the days, when I was growing up, we had no privacy. Mm -hmm. So why should I give her privacy? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so I opened it and read everything in there about the emotional, verbal abuse, um, the financial abuse. Anytime she had money, he took it from her. Um, he choked her at one time. He choked her till she almost passed out. Mm -hmm. That's when I had it. Mm -hmm. So she was forbidden not to see him, but she, obviously she kept on talking to him and seeing him behind my back. Well, on that night of October 2nd, um, that evening she had a bad attitude, fighting with him the whole time. Um, the next morning, at 7 o'clock in the morning, I had left for work. I called her, asked her if everything was okay. She said everything was fine, but I knew something was wrong. She wouldn't tell me. Um, apparently, she called one of her friends and told her friend that he kept on calling and harassing her. And he says he was coming to the house to kill her. And um, the friend didn't want to leave school, so she told her she'll see her after school. Um, 9.30, she spoke to my father. And after that, it's... That's um, when it happened. It's in between there and the first 911 call at 11.30. Um, apparently, he came to the ha to my house um, with two of his friends and shot her once in the head and left. And there was witnesses outside. I'd seen three guys leave my house. Um, so we knew he was that the first was person. Um, the detectives, the first thing they told me, they're treating it as a domestic violence case. I said, how? She's only 17, she's a minor, she has no children, and he explained to me what domestic violence was, which is any kind of physical altercation, any verbal, sexual abuse with a significant other. Harassment is also included? Yes, harassment, Does terroristic that threats. Texting, texting um, Facebook, all the cyber, social all networks, the cyber, or everything. telephone, okay. Any form of harassment abuse that's all within domestic violence when it's between a significant other which is a boyfriend girlfriend sibling brother sister cousin okay. mother father it's all categorized as domestic violence it doesn't matter race gender or age okay you could be 10 and it still be considered domestic violence okay so that's when i said well if i don't know this other people don't that's when I had to start bringing, bringing the awareness. awareness out. And so what do you think um, could have helped? Would it have been easier if the knowledge would have been there when she was younger? Yes. If parents were more aware that this was happening and not take it just as puppy love. Not just say, oh, it's just kids. Or teen attitudes. Yes. Yes. So... Each parent definitely understands their child and they should be aware that changes, like you said, she became, um, she stopped going to school, her mm -hmm. grades changed, changes. she pulled away from family and friends. Yes. Those are all signs it's that all we signs. can look yes. at for. Yes. Okay. That something's wrong. That something's, something's wrong. wrong with this picture. Okay. There's something unhealthy going on and not to bypass it because it's a bigger issue than what you think. You know, don't push it off as just teenagers being teenagers because it's not.